Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the brand new components that we've just got in the coal and nuclear major updates in Stormworks. We're going to be building a coal powered steam engine so we're going to be looking at all the components that you will need to actually create your first coal powered steam engine in game so really quite interesting we're going to take a look at every single component i'm going to go over all the little details tell you what you should do what you shouldn't do and we're going to hopefully have a working engine by the end so let's jump straight into the workbench and let's get started so now that we're in the workbench we can actually get started by building our engine now you need to go into your inventory and find your steam power here at the bottom it's just above your mic controllers now we've got a whole bunch of different components that we can use and they all do very specific things that you need to be aware of and how they all work so the first thing you need to start off with is some way to actually go and heat up your fluid and that's what you use a firebox for now there's two different fireboxes we have a small one or a medium sized one and then we also got a large one so depending on which one you want to use completely up to you in your own creation they both do the same thing we're going to start with just a regular sized firebox and we're going to place that in the middle of our creation great so now that we have that what else can we do well your firebox will need coal now you can either manually put coal in there so you can pick up coal and put it in it does start with nothing or you can connect a duct or a hopper on top you'll notice that there's this little black slot here at the top and that perfectly fits with a hopper or with the duct any size you can either use all three sizes you can use two of them up to you for example if we were to use a duct you can see that we can place that down it matches directly over there and you also notice that it's got these little black holes on the side and on the top that means because you can actually connect them up to each other so for example i've connected three like this that means it's acting as one large storage unit okay they're no longer three separate pieces you don't have to move it between them so it acts as one whole piece which is really quite useful now along with that you don't have to actually put a duct there you could use a hopper once again both of them do have coal so you could use it as that what else do you need well Along with that, you will notice at the back of the firebox, we have four different ports, okay? You will notice the first port we have is exhaust. So exhaust is pretty straightforward, just like any other engine here in Stormwax. We need to go and connect that up to some pipes and maybe up to an exhaust piece or up to a fluid port, up to you. Along with that, we also have air. Air is pretty straightforward. So you can just simply go and connect that up to, once again, a fluid port, and that way it's gonna get air. So air in, exhaust out, very easy. The next thing we have is going to be the coolant. Now we got coolant in and we got coolant out. This will actually heat up the fluid inside the pipes or inside your firebox. So what you want to do is you want to connect that up to your actual boiler. And that is the next thing that we're going to need. The boiler will convert that fluid over into steam. And your steam is what's actually going to be pushing your turbine. Okay, so we're going to go and put that over here, for example. You'll notice that on your turbine itself, we've got coolant A and coolant B. Now, it doesn't matter which one you connect that to. We could connect um, anyone to anyone. It doesn't matter. They can work as both in and out ports. However, on your actual firebox, you have got Pacific ports for out and Pacific ones for in. Okay, so we're going to go and get that all connected up now. Very simply, just using some pipes. And we can go and get that all nicely connected to each other. Great, so now that we've got our firebox connected to our boiler, when we light our firebox and it goes and starts increasing our temperature, it's going to start increasing our actual fluid, which is inside these pipes. And in theory, it will then start going and increasing the temperature of our boiler. Now, along with those two fluid ports that we've already connected, our boiler has got water in and it's also got steam out, okay? So for the water in, we need to add that to a tank, for example. So we can go and grab a tank, we can go and use a small one, we can use a medium one, it's completely up to you. Now, something new here in Stormworks that we didn't actually have before is these tanks have actually got two ports to them now. You'll see we got stored fluid and stored fluid. So you can use either one of them. This is very useful if you're actually bringing fluid back into this tank by using a condenser. So all we're going to do is we're going to simply go and get this connected over here. So from our fluid tank over into our boiler, nice and easy. Make sure you please go and click on the tank and you change that to water and you don't leave it as diesel or so on. Okay, so we're going to change that over to fresh water. Great. So now our boiler has got some actual water 
and it's heating up the water using the firebox. That means we're producing steam. Now, we can use that steam to actually go and push a turbine. So we're gonna go and grab a steam turbine. Now the steam turbines, they're quite big, okay? They're quite big here in game. Now with the steam turbines, you have got two outs for torque. So this can be connected to wheels, this could be connected to train, tra train wheels, could be connected to propellers. It's completely up to you to what you are going to be connecting it to, okay? Along with that, you've also got steam in and you've got steam out. So the steam out would be any excess steam that you're not currently using at the moment. I'm just gonna go and line this up nice and easy here so we can go directly out, okay? So we're gonna go from our boiler into our turbine. So any steam that's produced inside of our boiler is gonna go into our turbine. And that way we're now gonna get power or torque out and that can go into propeller for example. So we can go and add a nice little propeller here. So there we go. Add that on you can use the other side maybe for like a generator if you want to so we could go and grab a generator and put that on here at the end it is completely up to you to what you add on there make sure remember to use gearboxes too now once we've got that we of course got our steam out now the steam out could go straightly into a fluid port and that means that it's going to go into the atmosphere that's perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that just remember any steam that comes out of that you're losing it means it's not going anywhere it's going into the atmosphere and you're losing fluid eventually okay because you need fluid to, be, to be obviously boil water so instead of actually bearing it out through a food port what i recommend you use is you use a condenser okay what a condenser does is goes and transfers steam back into fluid that way we can continuously use it for our actual boiler which is over here so we're going to go from our steam out on our turbine over to our steam in on our condenser. Okay, so we're gonna go and get all of that nicely connected up here. Okay, just using some pipes. Great, so now your steam is coming from your turbine into your condenser, which means it's converting it back into fluid. And you'll notice that we have a fluid out or water out port. This is what we wanna go and get connected over to our tank that we've been using already. Okay, so we wanna go and get that all nicely connected up. So it's creating this loop system that we actually don't lose any steam, which is really quite useful. So we're gonna go and place that in there now. Now with the condenser, we need some way of obviously cooling it down, converting that steam back into fluid or back into water. And you'll notice we have coolant A and coolant B. This is where I recommend you guys go and use a radiator. Okay, a radiator will of course go and drop temperature or whatever fluid you put through it. You can use any of these, completely up to you. Your mileage will vary depending on which one you use. I'm just gonna go and use a small little electrical radiator that we're gonna go and place down over here. Along with that, we're also of course going to get the pipes connected for that little radiator. Don't forget to obviously turn the radiator on later on in your build process. We'll do it together later on also. Great, now with some of these components, you do have the option to change the fill level of the liquid inside there, just like you do with a tank. Okay, you can change the full level. Now, depending on how much fluid you give boilers, does actually change the characteristics a little bit. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But in theory, that's everything we need. Now we can actually go and start adding on some information. So we're going to add a battery on, because we need some way to turn our buttons on that we're going to be adding in a few seconds. And now we can go and add some dials and some buttons and things to actually tell us what's going on with our actual little system that we have here. So we're going to add a push button. The push button will allow us to actually turn our firebox or our little stove here, or whatever else you guys wanna call this, you can turn it on using a push button. So I'm simply gonna go and connect my push button over to my firebox, okay? That way if I push it, it turns it on, okay? Needs to have coal, of course, to go and turn on. Let's go and add some dials, okay? So we're gonna grab some simple dials here. Let's add one for the temperature of our actual firebox. So we're gonna go here and it's gonna say, this is our firebox temp. And I can simply go and get that connected over to the temperature of my firebox. The next thing I want is one for my temperature of my boiler and one for the pressure in my boiler. So I'm gonna go boiler temp and let's do boiler pressure. What are you thinking, well, why are you adding pressure? What, why do you need to read that information? Pressure is very important. Pressure will tell you, obviously, how much pressure you have in your boiler, but if your pressure goes over 10, 
your boiler will explode. That's from my testing, that might change, that might have already changed, we'll soon find out. But if it, from my testing, if it goes over 10, your boiler will explode. So it's very important to keep an eye on that, okay? Great, now that we have that, we can also add some more information if we wanted to, okay? At the moment, I actually don't wanna add any more information. I'm actually pretty happy with just reading that information right now. So make sure everything is connected like it is. Make sure we've got electricity to our buttons that we need it to and maybe our dials and so on and so forth. Same as maybe some electricity on our uh, radiator and our generator. And then we need some way of turning our little fan on for our radiator. So what I'm going to use, I'm just going to use a constant on signal so that my radiator is always turned on and the fan is always running. Okay, so we're just gonna go and simply connect that over there. So in theory, we can go and spawn that in and we can test this to make sure it works. So we can go and spawn that in, go walk over to our creation. You can see we do actually have coal in here. If I press up here, I can see I've got 26 coal. And if I go and hover over here, you can see I've still got 26 coal, sharing the coal between the duct here. So all I have to do now is turn the actual firebox on. You can see the temperature is currently going in, rising up. Now, you'll notice that our boiler temperature is also slowly going up, okay? I notice that usually your boiler is about half the temperature of your firebox. So for example, your firebox is usually at like, let's say 200, usually your boiler would be at about 100. That's just, once again from my testing personally. Your pressure will only start to build once your boiler has gotten past 100 degrees. Once your boiler gets past 100 degrees, your pressure will start to build. As I said earlier, you wanna make sure that your pressure doesn't get too high. If it goes over 10, your boiler will explode. So you need to be very careful in how much pressure you have. Now you can regulate this a couple different ways. One way is to control how much fluid goes into your boiler because remember there's no fluid it can't produce any more steam and can't produce any more pressure okay so that's one way of doing it the other way would be to put some type of release valve here okay so if it builds up way too much pressure we have a release valve that sprays steam up into the air that would be another way of doing it another cool way is to take that steam and do a bypass system where instead of it going into the turbine it goes directly into your condenser Okay, so that's another way you could do it. So while we're doing this, let's have a look. Our temperature of our firebox is currently at 100, okay? Which means we should have about 50 on our boiler. Yep, we do, half exactly as I said. Um, now, something to note here while we're waiting for this. You'll notice that there's a glowing effect. This is from the firebox, obviously, being on. And also we're getting hot. That's because the temperature around us is increasing because of this furnace or this firebox that we have here. Cool, so let's keep an eye on this. Boiler temperature is currently going up to 75 now. We've got some black smoke coming out of our furnace slash firebox, and our pressure is still zero. You'll notice that once our boiler goes up to 100 degrees, our actual boiler pressure will start building up, meaning that steam will start going across into our turbine and start powering our generator and our propeller. Let's have a look, 98, and our pressure should start building. There it is, it's starting to build. So it's building up building up and our pressure and you can hear there goes the propeller and there goes the generator okay so it's going to continue building up and we want to keep an eye on that pressure as i said you don't want that pressure to get over 10 10 means explosion no good okay so you can see it's still going up and it stopped at zero at 6.5 everything well why has it stopped there it stopped there because there's actually no more fluid in here okay i've controlled it by using that amount of fluid okay so it can't get any more fluid so it can't produce any more steam if i was to put a larger tank here it could produce more steam which means we would definitely have an explosion on our hands okay so that's something just to keep in mind okay with that now you'll see the temperature is going to keep on going up our firebox temperature is going to keep on going up and of course if we want to we can keep on refilling our coal if we want to so that's the very basics of it. Now, a lot of you probably think, well, how do I control the throttle of a propeller? Well, there's two ways of doing it. You could, if you wanted to, you could add a simple clutch over here. That would be the easiest way to get it done. But another way of doing it is actually to go and put something called a variable valve over here. 
you'll see here we have a fluid variable valve. This allows us to actually control how much fluid goes through it. So I just want to make sure that I've got it the right way. So fluid in, fluid out into there. Okay, that way I can turn this on and off depending if I want steam to go through it. Now, something that you need to be careful with is obviously if you're not putting steam through that, your pressure might be building up inside of your little boiler over here. So another recommendation possibly is to go and add a release valve. I do that by using a simple on and off valve putting it over here, making sure it's got out here and going and putting a port. Now we can go and use a threshold gate over here to tell the system when to open and close that port. So for example, hey, if my pressure is, let's say over eight and anywhere between eight and let's say nine, 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 then open my port and release pressure out of my system, which is steam, okay? This little variable valve here all you have to do is go and connect that over to a little throttle lever on your creation whenever you want power like that. And we're going to connect that over to our variable valve. Okay, just like that. Now make sure you, of course, go and add some electricity to everything. So make sure your throttle lever's got some electricity and these valves, they actually operate on electricity, funny enough. So we need to make sure they've got that. We're going to turn our creation here and we're going to get everything on. We're going to turn it on wait for it to obviously get up to its temperature. And then once it actually starts building pressure, we shouldn't see any power going through that turbine because we're stopping it by using that variable valve over here. All right, so our boiler temperature is just about to reach 100 degrees and you'll notice that our pressure is starting to build, but because we have this variable valve, nothing is actually going through into the turbine and our pressure is actually building up inside of our boiler. Now, hopefully, because we're using a small or slash medium tank, we shouldn't have too much of an issue in terms of pressure. You can see our fluids actually going down and once it reaches zero, it's not going to increase its pressure anymore. But just in case you're using a larger tank, that's why we have this actual little release valve over here or pressure release valve, okay? Now, because we've added that variable valve, we should be able to just use the throttle lever over here to increase and decrease our power that comes out of our actual little turbine which is pretty cool so you can see there i can just go and increase it and decrease it and all of it's doing is it's just allowing steam to come from our boiler through the pipe into the variable valve and then into our actual turbine itself okay so that's what it's allowing power to do and of course once it goes through our turbine you'll notice that it's actually getting steam out it's coming through here into our condenser and then from our condenser it's dropping its temperature and then from there, it's going into our little tank and you can see it's coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out, and then it's going back into our boiler. So it's a nice little closed loop system. Of course, you are going to go and lose steam if your pressure gets too high and it's going to go up into this fluid port. As I said, what you could easily do is rework this piping to go into this condenser instead. That would make it a completely closed loop system for that. So. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for building a steam engine powered by coal here in Stormworks. There's a lot of different ways you can play around with this. You can add a lot of more different components, do it in different configurations. This is just how I've learned how to do it and how I've been doing it since the update today. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. If you don't want to miss any future content, I am going to be doing a video on nuclear power in a few days and a few hours. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And if you don't want to miss it, hit that subscribe button and remember to click the little bell icon to be notified as soon as that gets released on my YouTube channel. And until the next one, we will see you then.